Negus. Negus. Um, what is the language of origin? Uh, Ethiopian to Amharic. Um, what is the definition? A king. It's used as a title of the sovereign of Ethiopia. Negus. Negus. N-E-G-U-S, Negus. Hustle Ho Tech, what's going on, brother? Well, you know, ain't nothing changed but the oppressors. <laughs> not many, not many brothers, people, period. Less than one percent, bro. Less than one oh, percent. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, and, and, and out of that less than one percent, it, it's less than one percent of black. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, holla at me. Like I said, don't 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 get it twisted because I don't, I don't got the interview voice. I'll run laps around you. <laughs> Deacon clearly ain't got no filter, and uh, <laughs> and the bishop he, he working on it, but you know God ain't finished with me yet either. So uh, welcome to the church. Welcome to the church. Not everyone needs to believe in your dreams, but you do. We want to encourage you if if you got a, a a dream or an idea, bet on yourself. And supporting means supporting is like sharing and reviewing, but supporting is also sending that money in. Pimping, positively influencing my people in negotiating growth. Yo, bro, you was reading books for pizza, son. You you want a different level of poor, yeah. <laughs> I, I do. This is almost like free consulting. Hit that cash app because we giving y'all you know, free game away on here. Hey, yo, bro, y'all ain't never did nothing, yo. Y'all ain't never been the best at your at your local YMCA. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you don't, you can't even imagine the, the immense pressure that it is just to stay on top. Look, y'all. Welcome to the church. The good deacon and the bishop. We doing it ourselves, and we want to encourage you. Look here. Think again. Start asking the right questions to grow and help other people grow. Being looking like two chains, two chains. Um. So let's get to the. Put it up, brother. I, I I don't even need think I need to say much. Just put it up. Y'all see that headline? Our Jesse of the week is Trick Daddy, who defends eating booties, and that's who you got rolling your blunt and passing it to you. Oh, you gonna learn to laugh today? You getting that medicine with that candy right now? That's our show, y'all. Yeah. It's about love. Ninja ninja if they ain't about truth, you then you might have to check them. Ninjas gon' nig if you let them. If, you let them. if they boys in blue, then you might have to rent them. Ninjas gon' nig if you let them. Hey, yo, you said if they the boys in blue, you might have to rent them, yo? Stop it. You talking that gangster gangster <laughs> one? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up? We back for another week. I think we are four weeks straight. I think, yo, we back on a on a consistency basis. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Pippi Niggas the Show. I am one of the hosts. The, the, the I'm the bishop. I'm the bishop. Now nah, you do. I'm the deacon. You the bishop. The deacon, but there. And I got who's the co-host? Who's the co-host? Or, or you the, you Gladys today? Who's Gladys? I'm 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 pip. See, that's what happened when you 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 allow a Jesse to be Gladys. I'm the good Bishop Bingham Hustle Hotel. I got it right that time. You <laughs> got a lot of time. names. Yeah. Welcome to Pimp and Negus. A hey, love is the goal. We try to exercise grace and mercy to understand one another. We trying to help each other grow, and we sharing our our growth journey with y'all. Uh, if, if you can't tell, just look at the intro video. You can see the hair is just growing. So that's yeah. one area. We ain't, we ain't cutting it no more. We free around here. You you're not cutting no more? You free? You're going to be looking like the, the new the new and approved Jay-Z out here, yo? Yeah, man. I'm trying to yeah. get the ugly hair just all the way. Just... <sighs> yo, I'm jealous, man. You see that? <laughs> yeah. You got to fight off the LeBron. As I got to fight off the LeBron, brother. yo. I got to put off the brown. So let before we get into the show, let what you you got. Let's promote the website is up and live. Yes, peepingniggas.com. Please go there and get your merch. I got I got one of the merch, one of the shirts on. Show the people your shirt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Show the show people your shirt. We got we got the uh the website at pimpingniggas.com. We got the stickers up there. Uh we got uh 
So it's a work in progress, but it's up and live. And, you know, it's a, it's a labor of love, as they would say. Uh, but, yeah, please go there and support. You can also support us with uh, hitting that cash app. Oh, don't put that cash app up. Yeah. Yeah, we got to mm-hmm. put the plate around. We ain't been um, sending the plate around. Yeah. Let's, let's pass the plate. Yeah, yeah, we got all the old videos up over there, though, y'all. Uh, we appreciate y'all joining us. And uh, you ever want to fact check your boys? Because, hey, man, I'm going to say we be right about a lot of stuff, brother. Yeah. All yeah. tweets matter. Did you read the contract? We be dropping jewels, man. Y'all really should be hitting that cash app up. We ain't. Yeah, begging. what's up, brother Mo? We got Lambert. What up, Negus? Okay. All right, don't yeah. care. Yeah, what else? What else you got going on before we get in the show? We got we got some a lot of topics. I don't know if we're gonna get to all of them. What else? What else? What else? You what's going on with the counseling consulting business, bro? What's Man, going on with the books? You ready to build anything? We talked about it behind the scenes. I don't know. Let me tell you, God is God is great, brother. Um, I got a director. Okay. Um, who, who's gonna help out? We shooting August twenty sixth. That Jesse said, look. If I'm fooling with you and I'm going to surround you with great actors, you got to take some acting classes. Mm. I, I, I'm trying to be humble. I'm like, yo, I could play myself, bro. That's that's not yeah. a problem. But look, he hooked me up with shout out to Professor uh, Vera J. Katz. She's okay. uh, she's a big dog. I didn't know it. But she's spelled named K-A-T-Z. Yeah, she made yeah, sure I'm to tell me that she was uh, uh, Jewish. Cause I mentioned yeah. something about God that I thought that was an interesting exchange, but she trained Debbie Allen, Sanai Lathan, uh, Taraji P. Henson, Anthony Anderson. She was a professor at Howard. Um, so man, I start acting classes this Friday, bro. Like okay. I'm moving serious on that. And I got the book, but I'm not, I'm going to drop all a bunch of content on y'all at the end of the summer. So that's what's up with me, man. God is moving. And look, step by step, y'all, if you can achieve it, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. So sometimes you just got to sit and find some quiet place to envision some how you want to impact the world. And uh, this going to be my impact, man. I just want to give all glory to God because I know uh, Jesse ain't uh, you don't make it here by yourself. And then we on what? Show 60? Nah, next week is 60. So next, next week we got we got we got to do a big. Yeah. Um, we gotta do it. so. We, yeah, we we said we're gonna do a hundred and then we're gonna revisit this thing at the hundred. So we more than halfway there, we 60% done next week. Um, but what What's I got, I got a, yeah, I got the firm. The firm is popping yo, these trademarks are coming through. Like, so I did a lot of trademarks, um, during a recession. I guess people was getting their trademarks, and they was hitting me up. So a lot of them are coming through. So you see me sharing them. We, we got hours too. We we told, I think we talked about that last week. We got hours. Um, a lot of them are, are coming through. Um, I still got the online course that's up, so that's at uh, so just reach out to me, go to doublethea.com or follow me on all IG. So I got the the startup business, the minority bi- uh, business owner, business enterprise startup business, the accelerator that's online. So give me if you're interested, give me a, um, a shout out, it's not cheap. What's going but, on with the cannabis business? Oh, the cannabis business. So I'm trying to figure that out. So that's a great question, bro. I'm going to try to keep it light. So I, I do have the consulting that I'm doing on it. I'm thinking of a um educational thing that I could do on it. Maybe like how do you get into the business for uh, a fee? Because I don't want to meet with everybody. I don't want to talk with everybody because a lot of y'all don't got no money, <laughs> real deal money. But you can learn. <laughs> you don't say you want to spend that money on that. Invest um, in yourself. Yeah, exactly. And um i'm just trying to figure out so i'm doing a lot so i think we talked about this before so whatever i'm doing has to make sense like i guess they call it vertically i guess not horizontally so it got to be something that not an easy list so i'm trying to think about i'm still involved though for, for sure but i'm just trying to think about how do i fit in get in where i fit in where i'm not spreading myself too thin you're you know negotiating I mean? your own growth exactly 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 because once you start spreading yourself out too thin you, you become a what they say a jack of all trades and master of none and i'm not trying to do that yes sir yes sir yeah but well, let's get into the show man let's start let's start off hot with the macy gray you shared this to me with this this week i knew i know she said you know um she was basically saying like yo y'all can't tell women how to be women and apparently the lgbtq plus did i miss a letter no nah, i got that one i see what's on the screen they came at her 
and was like, yo, what do you talk about? And she was like, yo, her response was, I'm telling you from a woman's perspective what it feels like to be a woman. And he went crazy. Yeah, no, they tried to get at her. Let's uh, let's play a clip. Let's see. I will say this and everybody's going to hate me. But as a woman, just because you go change your parts doesn't make you a woman. Right. And I, I will say this and everybody's going to hate me. But Yeah, they 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 went at her and she's like, look, I'm a supporter. Hold on. But I got a right to to basically say this. Um, a woman is a woman. You can't uh, you can't change the title. I'm a I'm a switch to um where's this other article? Um matter of fact, the, the National Education Association, the largest teachers union, proposed a resolution on Wednesday that they would change the word mother in contracts to birthing parents, uh, to be more inclusive to trans parents and Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You didn't, we, you didn't get you dropping this on me it's live, yo. You didn't tell you about this in the pre-show. Hold up, yo. it's it, it tied with the Macy Gray thing. Like, what is? Well, a I'm woman? trying to think. Like, <laughs> who can? Never mind. But go ahead, go ahead with you. I'm gonna give you my response. We, we ain't yeah. gonna get fired, but I mean, yeah. this is our think again segment. The, the 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 question is, who defines what a woman is? Is, is Macy Gray wrong? She's a woman saying, no, nah, you're not finna call me none of these other names. And I could respect you. Sounded like she was saying, let's let's put transgender woman to make it clear. And you can't have no baby. Then we, we can respect you wanting to be called a woman, but we got to add a, a asterisk to that kind of like, if you can't birth a baby, then you're not a woman. Yeah, and she made a difference much. between she made a distinction between um girls and women. So right, she was like, you could be a female, like it's a difference between a girl and a woman. And she basically was saying, like, you can't tell me how to be a woman, like just because you cut it off, that don't automatically makes you a woman because you cut your your your, your tool off, I guess. Yeah, well, look, I, I guess the point we brought this up because it's is is relevant. Uh, to us, not just being men, but just in society as a, a, a whole. If mm -hmm. I decide that Charlie Bingham is a, 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 you know what? I'm waking up today. I'm Uncle Ruckus. I'm going to be a white man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be like, man, if you don't get out of here, like <laughs> it, it almost is like a slippery slope. Like, can we define ourselves by whatever we want to define ourselves? And that's fine. But does society have to so here, here, here's my thing with it, and you know I'm a Negro pen, right? I'm a uh -oh, embracing the Negro the, pen. Yeah, get the Negro pen, right. but Go so you can, you can, you can, you can, um, you gonna make me solo? You can, you can define yourself <laughs> however you want to define yourself. That doesn't necessarily mean that I have to uh, agree with your designation. That goes for everybody, though. That means if you want to be a dog, cat, or whatever, but you can take me off this screen. Cause I'm about to go into something I said last week when I said human beings are not going to make it. Cause when I said, I believe I said it here, I definitely posted it on, on, on Facebook. I said, um, it was a Draymond quote. Draymond said he would not have be he wouldn't, they, the, the Golden State Warriors were not going to win again if they did not get Kevin Durant. Against the had, Cavs. LeBron. Against the Cavs, right? And you had all these commentators and people on social media telling this man he was wrong. That man is probably one of two people. He's probably seen Steph play and play more professional basketball than anybody else on the planet because he's been there the longest. Him and him and Clay Thompson, right? He's probably also the person that has prepared for uh, the Cavs more than you know Steph and Clay. And yo, how are we gonna tell this man he wild? <laughs> like, like yo, you bugging? You tripping? Like he has all the information. He has way more information than all of us. And we're we're telling that man that he's wild and that they could have beat the Cavs without uh and um Kevin Durant. And what's interesting, no one from Golden State Warriors said he wilding. I didn't get that. So this is this is so that's on a lighter note. But then to go to Macy Gray, like how are you gonna tell this woman, this this woman that what she defines as a woman is not a woman. She been a woman her whole life, yo. Humans ain't gonna make it, man. Uh oh. Well, yeah. we 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 got a woman who's speaking. We gonna shut the heck up and listen. 
Kimberly Williams says, just here to say that not, that not all women can have babies, so that can't be the bar. That's fair. That's fair, yeah. Yeah, that's that's. Well, that's pull fair. that pull that uh article up again, cause um that was uh you you snuck that in on me. We ain't talk about that. Hold up. Oh no, they the yeah. the of course it's Fox News. Uh -huh. We like to have diversity of thought here. We'll have articles from CNN, New York Post, Heck Media, Takeout. What, what's the so what's the, the difference between room? uh watch birthing parent or mothers scroll down again so i can see this in real time so i can have reaction in real time person prefer being called mother not a birthing parent one of them said however that's fine so a birthing parent is not necessarily a mother that's true i guess because you could birth a kid and not be the child's mother i guess right uh yes wait. Yes, you could birth a child, but technically, nah, never mind. <laughs> I to confuse That's what I'm saying. And the, my my thought is, it, it's a slippery slope. Um, because if you're gonna do that, then what happens? And we're gonna get into another topic later. What happens when you just want to define yourself as something completely different? Like, think I, Uncle Ruckus is a good example. Like, you a black man, and you say, you know what, I'm white. And I feel like there was a, a video out there of a, a, a girl. Uh, maybe she went on Maury or something like that. But she was like, I'm white. I don't care what you tell me. Mm, so we had that. We did have that, that white lady that uh, said she was black. What was her yeah. name? Uh, she, yeah, you gave yeah. her heck, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, gave, I gave her hell in real time. But ah, yeah. I forget her name. She was part of the NAACP. She yeah, was, she like was the, the NAACP of, president. Like, you know, was, no, was she wasn't part of it. She was the NAAC pre president of a local chapter. What you talking she, about? Right. She wasn't a client. She's the president. <laughs> She's the president. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. What else we got next? Well, let's, so that's the um, segment. Like, huh? let's 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 think about this society. Yeah, that's the thing again. Segment. Let's talk, let's talk about. Oh, another thing again is joint. You know what? The, uh, Rachel. Yeah, yeah. Rachel Lo Dolazar. That was her name. Rachel Dolazar. Yeah. Whatever happened to Rachel Dolazar? I gotta. I gotta. Y'all ran her, her off. off. Yeah, I got a YouTube her to see how she's living, yo. You and your people ran her off, and she was trying to do some good. Well, we still got Sean King. <laughs> there goes the shade. <laughs> we still got Sean King. They call there that dude the Taco Max. I'll never forget that one. That was Taco Max. So let's hop into, um, you want to get into the series joint, the Emmett Till. So the Emmett Till supporters. Man, the Emmett Till man, this is this is crazy. So, for those that don't know, there was a a, a warrant for the arrest that was never served on the person that was created in the real time. So, um, they still haven't served that warrant for whatever reason. We should have bring Rizzy on at some point in time or somebody that's a prosecutor. Um, oh, Rizzy reached out. I gotta connect with Rizzy. Uh, yeah, we need to be. Week. Yeah, we got. We should reach out to Rizzy. Uh, we've been saying that for a minute. We got to start bringing people on the show since we're about to be show 60. But um, to make a long story short, so there was a warrant that was uh, issued that wasn't served. And, you know, uh, some of our people was about about it. It was like, yo, we about to go serve this joint and try to go get it ourselves. They went to our crib. Then they went to the senior living building. And uh, to make a long story short, she was nowhere to be found, allegedly. But they was about that life. And I, I, I'm, you know, Whenever I say, you know, I talk a lot of stuff, but I do love when people be about that life, though, when they be about what they be talking about. Yeah, Personally. no, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, if you look closely right here, oh, boy, uh, his, his vest says black, B-L-A-Q-U-E. <laughs> <laughs> so they was they was really about that life. Like, OK, I see they got I, the red, black and green African patch, too, on it. Yeah, they got bulletproof yeah. vest and on that dress. And you got the sister there, too. Look, they knocking on the door like, where is she at? Bring her out here. Yo, they got bulletproof vest on, too. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, hey. <laughs> Welcome to the church. Welcome to the all church. Right. I'm not mad at what that else at all. we got? So the people we need to be mindful of that. Like, let's I, I'm with y'all. Keep the pressure on. We talked about this last week. If you can go after Cosby years later, you can go after uh, I think we brought up a story. They just arrested like a hundred year old Nazi guard or whatever uh -huh. in Germany. Hey man, yeah, she deserved to uh not be in no 
uh assisted living and yeah that, you, that, you done came out you should have kept that sis to, yeah. to your grave <laughs> <laughs> yeah she, she should have never said nothing yeah i don't even know why why she because she when or if i remember the story correctly she didn't come out apologizing she was just like saying, i'm that chick yeah 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 yeah. so she was really feeling us so but all right let me get into the book the book of the week is um rich dad poor dad buying assets and liabilities yeah let's get into the book man because we haven't done a book in a minute so i'm assuming well i read it i haven't read it in a minute but i remember the concept so this was this was your this is your uh recommendation why you said you want to do it this week hey man i'm just um uh, i had read it a while ago and for some reason you know it's been years everything just seemed fresh so i'm listening to it uh oh, listening to it okay with, with, with my son I, I just ordered the actual book again too because i'm gonna have him read it but um one of the concepts that it's a couple concepts that stuck out and I'll give you the origin story of, of how I got here, because the last book we talked about was Leaders Eat Last by Simon um, Simon Sinek. And in, Sinek, in, in yeah. that book, he kind of goes through the different generations and why, how to kind of influence them, why they do what they do. And uh, we, we took a, a trip, I, I think, to my mother's house or something. And so I just played it with, with the family in the car. And he was talking about dopamines and how mm -hmm. if you look at any type of addiction, crackhead, gambling, yeah. smoking, drinking, the dopamines, whatever produces that dopamine, they want more of. And he uh -huh. talks about how the, the millennials are addicted to kind of distraction and he brings up like how likes and you know your phone buzz or whatever you can't help but look at it and uh -huh. when you're feeling down you 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 either post a social media um message or or you send a group text and whenever anybody spot respond that that just shoots your dopamine up make you feel good about yourself and so to, to help my son break his uh addiction and he was listening and i'm like see son that's why you be acting crazy you be yeah yeah, yeah. he carries some suitcases up the step that jesse don't usually do that <laughs> they had just got back from a, a trip to nashville where um shout out to him man we talking about growth i come on here and i talk about trey my son because you know i'm like anthony anderson and he's like junior if you watch the show blackish sometimes i look at him like how is you my son man i don't yeah. understand it and you yeah. got my name we done poured a lot into you but boys develop slower and he's getting it now man so he's he's charlie c the third yeah i i actually gave him a uh he just don't have a, a initial i actually gave him a middle name it's so what's his middle name for cameron so Cam, yeah, okay. yeah um okay. so he's technically not the third though he's the first charlie he, cameron he the third jesse we define <laughs> yeah you will see you charlie c but go ahead I even... <laughs> we define this around here i feel like we talked about this before we define it look what's your name boy Kunta. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't we don't play by your rules but he's he's getting it and so to break his addiction I ordered some puzzles, like 300 piece puzzles, because he been he used to do he's done all the puzzles. We had him doing puzzles very early just to man. The, the guy talks about it. But part of our problem is all right, we can't focus on one task at a time uh -huh. for an, and finish it like for. Uh -huh. And I think, you know, that's what distinguishes me, because I, we talked about this before. I had that period where my mom wouldn't let us uh, watch no TV unless it was PBS. Reading uh -huh. Rainbow, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Got uh -huh. that. All of that. And you, but, you, had, um, yeah, you was reading, that's the years you was reading, getting the pizzas, pe free yeah, pizzas. The, the, the book it and, yeah, and look yeah. at us now. Yeah. Look, we ain't ashamed to read <laughs> online. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't worried about stumbling. But while he was doing the puzzles, I was like, all right, I'll help you, son. Um, and we that's how we started listening to Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And um, one of the things that, that sticks out to me um, that we were going to talk about and it branches into other topics is he's big on um, buy assets and not liabilities. And uh -huh. his book was immediately controversial and didn't sell for a, a long time um until some things came to fruition because the 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 wisdom he shares 
wasn't conventional at the time. Like the conventional wisdom, even to this day, if you talk to most people is your home is your largest asset. And uh-huh. he's like, nah, that ain't the way to grow wealth. Your home is actually a liability because it's full of expenses. Assets bring in cash flow. As soon as you buy a large home, you got to get furniture. You got property taxes. All of that is money going out. You got to maintain it. All of that is money going out. It's not necessarily bringing it in unless mm-hmm. you're one of those smart people that you bought, um, what you call it, a multifamily home. Uh-huh. And you live in one unit and you got everybody else, then that's an asset. But he's he's like, man, that simple principle keeps a lot of people from um, being wealthy because they don't understand the difference between an asset and a liability. And I thought about it like, yeah, Jesse do buy a lot of uh, liabilities, but because I'm a stock investor, I also buy assets as well. And Kind of our, the, the the message for the people here in 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 growth is learn. Let's get rid of old ways that hurt. Learn what is an asset and a liability. Think about what's putting money in your pocket and what's growing, mm-hmm. and that's an asset. And if it's just costing you, and then you got to pay to maintain it or whatever, that's a liability. Netflix uh-huh. a liability. But as we were sitting listening. And he brought up something smart. He's like, well, how do you turn a liability into an asset? Like a car is a a liability. Uh But if you rent that sucker out on Toro, it becomes an asset for you. You know, so there's ways that you can convert liabilities into assets. And then he goes into taxes and how, you know, corporations were started. So it's it's really good. I Yeah, you you went on. I'm about to about to say (laughs) Wrap it up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up. So I'm just gonna add because you you don't went on the on the sermon. You was doing Bible study just now. I'm Get about that to cash out. Cash out the cash out. Or to put the cash app joints on there. So all I'm gonna add is um I think the, the, the book is a great primer, but I think it's um it you know I don't I don't necessarily agree 100 percent with everything that he's saying, but I don't agree 100 percent of what anybody's saying. Um but I do think, um, especially we, we as in black people and as Americans, we overindulge in um, conspicuous consumption, right? Mm. Um, so I do think we have to figure out how to maintain. So I created a group on Facebook. I'm not active at it, but it, it, I think you win it. It's called Soul, um, on Fire. Soul on Fire. So it's really just about how do you get people on board with um, getting assets, but also you know, talking to them and, and, and where they at. So I, I believe in you got to reach people where they at, not where you want them to be. So you can't mm-hmm. tell people, I see you got the Gucci shades on. You can't tell people that's been sold conspicuous consumption all their life that you can't just not buy Gucci all of a sudden. Like you can't, it's not going to be cold turkey. You're going to fall off like that. So it's really just about the balance and you can't take the stuff with you either. So you got to enjoy your money somehow, some way. So that means buying stuff that you want versus what you need. You know what I'm saying? So I don't necessarily agree that you should be. So we got to get Jaye brothers on here because he's he's like super into like, don't be buying anything. Basically, like this is be living like, yo, bro, to me, that's not living. You know what I'm saying? Like this is it for us to enjoy however you want to enjoy it. Live and, and be smart. I, I, I think I said this once. I'm going to say it again just for the people out there in the back. So y'all hear me clearly. Part of my insurance for my job. No. I get to get a pair of glasses every year, every uh-huh. year, me, my wife, my, my son. So your boy ain't paid for these Gucci. But let me see. Let me see what type of watch you got on. Yeah. Look, that's, that's an asset. <laughs> <laughs> look, they sent me the certificate. It, it's an appreciated and everything. Yeah, I ain't going to tell you how much, but yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's an asset. Look. Yeah. And we talked about how can you turn liabilities into assets. So don't let don't don't let the flash fool y'all. I'm cheap. I'm like your boy from the game. When you remember uh, the light skin dude, you watch that cheap. Nah, right? nah, I know what you're talking about. Though. I know really if watched it. If it's yeah. yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, <laughs> flush it down. Now, I know my family tired of me walking through the house turning off lights for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, but not nah, so. But but you do what you do indulge though, right? So oh, like yeah, you know, what I'm saying we, we do. Lights. So I think I it has to be a balance. But I think 
the uh you shouldn't be indulging before you not before you before investing you know what i'm saying i think that's a he talks about yeah. how your assets should fund your yeah. indulgence like dividends and all of that stuff yeah. that's that yeah jason pitts yes sir definitely pitts yeah but you're so right think, you indulge but indulge at the right time the we right don't time. indulge and be broke and know our rent going i remember coming up you had to have a fourth of july outfit a memorial day outfit yeah. christmas easter. outfit easter, easter was... outfit and your rent ain't ain't you, you and then you you don't know what's happening with your rent like we yeah. got to be smarter than that y'all. smarter than that and also you know what I, I realized too and this is much later on in life is that you, know, you got to catch some sales too bro because all them drinks <laughs> all them drinks going sell right after easter season yo you, know what I'm you get your polo from tj maxx nah nah that's why i said i learned this later on in life <laughs> <laughs> marshall's <laughs> burlington co factory yo, be I smart learned, y'all so quick story right I, when i was in high school i just had like all the polo and all the all the latest tommy hill right and then my boy uh i'm gonna I'm just put your name out there will my baddie or will my baddie was to come to school like yo I was just at the mall on Friday or Saturday, whatever. I'm wearing what I brought Friday and Saturday on Monday. He had like a polo shirt on that I didn't see at, at um, the mall. And I'm like, yo, where you get that from? He's like, yo, I got this from Macy. I'm like, nah, I know you did. <laughs> so he was like, yo, come to find out. This joke was buying bootleg and stuff for Marshalls, yo. And I was out here being a dummy, spending all my money on the new stuff. He just got the, the, the he got whatever he got. He got just as much as me, but it's, it's from Marshalls and Bootleg. I said, yo, this joker got the cheat Hold code. Up, man, I didn't know that was just between bootleg and on Marshall, sale. Yeah. If he had polo association, then you were well. Nah, he had that. Hey, he to cook he definitely had the, the fake polo, though. He had the fake polo horse, the fake Tommy Hill, but it wasn't the polo association. But even, even that conversation is like, yo, why are we making a distinction between, you know, uh, the association in, in the in the polo drink because at the end of the day is all conspicuous consumption, right? We we proving we trying to oppress people that we don't even necessarily like. You know what I'm saying? We could go into that <laughs> another another time. Let's, let's be halfway through the show. All right, uh-uh. I'm the pimp. You tell me where we go. All right, let's go to your boy. This is because you 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 the you the well you the bishop. I'm the deacon too. So what's higher on the church? Your bishop or the deacon? The bishop higher. You the bishop. Going to uh Creflo Dollar, right? He a bishop or not? Nah? What is he? Creflo, just a preacher. He's a baller. So if y'all didn't see, and I uh, I feel too, de- I got two sides to this. He apologizes for basically teaching false doctrine, saying that Christians needed to tithe. He's, he's since studied. So on one end, I want to applaud him for his growth and for coming out and admitting it because He's known as a prosperity doctrine uh, preacher. You know, he got the Jets and and one of the largest churches in Atlanta. He's had one for a while. I don't know if it's still the largest. It might be the largest still. Um, you, go, you ever went to his church? So? I, I did. Here's yeah. an interesting story. When I was dating Tierra, that was where she went. And so when we summered down here, the the, the first summer down there together. Yeah. In so, law school? Two L year. Yep. Oh, y'all kept that on the low. But we'll talk about that at the time. Listen, we, we, y'all was creeping, yeah. We we didn't. Every, everybody that knew that look, our, our our classmates knew, but anyway, I don't that remember that. Yo. She, I was a classmate. I, and, I, and I was in your section. I don't remember that. But go ahead. We'll she went to um she went to Spelman for undergrad, and so that was her church. And so, uh-huh. you know, when you date and you want to compromise and all of this and that, I never really kind of respected him because I knew uh-huh. the Bible and I knew a lot of the stuff he was teaching was like, nah, that's your interpretation, bro. But that's uh-huh. not how the people who received the Bible at the time saw that. So um, when in there, man, it was ATMs all over the place. They had a bookstore. It really was like going to Broadway. It was a production, like yeah, yeah, real yeah. talk. You had people dancing down the aisles. I mean, they had everything. It was nice. I ain't going to lie. And then when he went to talking, I'm just like, uh, rolling my eyes. Like, nope, yeah. that ain't right. That ain't right. I'm thinking to myself, but I can't be rude. I'm surrounded by all these church folks. I'm there with, you know, the 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 who I'm hoping will be my wife and all of this and that. Um, So... To some extent, I give him credit for being honest, finally. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
But then on the other side, it's like, bro, but how many people did you mislead? Now you rich. You got yeah. your jets based off this false doctrine that you was teaching. And it took you this long to figure that out yes. and come out. So it ain't ask that hard to understand. So let me ask you this. What exactly did he get wrong with tithing? Because I saw this and I knew you was going to bring it up. So I was going to let you you rock. What, 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 did, what exactly did he get wrong? So it's two questions. Mm -hmm. What exactly did he get wrong with tithing? And mm -hmm. then the follow-up question is, outside of apologizing, what do you think he should do? Because he did get rich off these people, right? Mm -hmm. And he has to make, what, what should he do to make amends, reparations, if for the lack of a better term? Okay, the, 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 the first question is, or, or the, the first answer to your question is, man, he was telling people, uh, your faith ain't big enough, you ain't blessed because you're not tithing enough. And tithing was an Old Testament doctrine. There you go. Look, mm -hmm. put that cash app up. Yeah, you know, <laughs> right there. Y'all, y'all just send it to me and me only. <laughs> um, man, when you look at the the Bible, the 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 Jews and the the Israelites, whatever you want to call them, from the Old Testament was commanded to tithe because they was. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm just trying. I'm trying to get it in back. Man, look, you you the. Look, you the you Gladys. Just let me run it. Look, look, yeah, you see yeah, this, yeah, this, man. Um, so that was the Old Testament doctrine. In the uh -huh. New Testament, you gave as as you felt as the Lord prospered. A tithe uh -huh. that meant a specific number. It was like ten percent, like, right? When you're yeah, supposed yeah. to give the first of your fruits, like uh, so when your harvest came. If you growing greens and and tomatoes, uh -huh. you're supposed to give ten percent. At the at the beginning, what uh -huh. people fail to realize is also within them commandments that the Israelites had was you were supposed to leave a percentage for poor people so they mm. could just come through your fields and take whatever. That way, your society, nobody was ever hurting because uh -huh. everybody was able to give. And you was and, and you know, it's funny because a lot of our laws are have kind of like a, 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 a biblical What's the word? Biblical foundation. Yeah, we 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 but are a somebody... Christian Christian society. So a lot of our yeah. our a lot of our laws come from the Judeo Jewish Christian faith. Yeah. So but go ahead. Oh, so you saying that it's in the new? That's so tithing. In the, in the it was an Old Testament doctrine that kind of went away. God okay. God did, uh, or when Jesus came, he did away with a lot. That's why they killed him because he uh -huh. was he was talking against like, nah, this ain't gonna get you to heaven. Tithing not gonna get you he to was, heaven. He was a he was a negus. He was a negus. negus. Um, yeah. but another one was you know every seven years if somebody owed you a debt, you uh -huh. were supposed to forget that. So your answer to your first question was. It, it's clear when you study the Bible, not just listen to what preachers tell you, but uh oh, uh -oh y'all finna make me put on my uh Get your my soul. Gucci, my, my my Gucci preaching robe. Um <laughs> second Timothy 2 15 tell you to study to show yourself approved unto God, not man, mm. but God. And then so repeat that again, Timothy. What you just spit up. Second Timothy 2 15 says, uh -huh. study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman, which means you got to do some work, your own work, uh -huh. rightly, meaning rightly dividing the word of truth, which mm -hmm. means you understand it. And there's something called exegesis, which means you taking out of it what you're supposed to take out of it. And then eisegesis, meaning you you bringing in what you is. Or I may have them mixed up, but basically spell, don't bring your own. Don't bring E X E G I S I S. Come on, man. Pizza Hut, book it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know if that's how that's how it's pronounced. But no, yeah. exegesus and eisegesus. Yeah, y'all yeah. look it up. Uh, y'all yeah. come in the comments. I may have them backwards, yeah. but one is you going in with your preconceived notions of what it should say, and then you uh -huh. pulling that out, and you uh -huh. you see it that way. And then the other one is no, you going in empty to learn. And you seeking to figure out when the letter was written or when that book was written, how would the people in that culture that received it have mm. would have understood? That's, so that's the that's the end. That's the I one. The other one, yeah. the first one was the, the EX. Yeah, I'm just using, I'm using, I, I wasn't part of the booking program, but again, I, I run laps around y'all. I, I know pre prefixes. <laughs> Let me look at the comments. Ain't nobody come to see you, Otis. His name is Dog. Right, so, 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 so let's, but let's get. And to, then your uh, second question. Second, okay, let's get to the second what question. What should he do for reparations? reparations? 
Man, because, cause, I'm struggling with that because I think his apology is to some extent reparations. At the end of the day, even though you done got rich, uh, it's between you and God, you uh, and your heavenly father. So you don't owe no, us nothing. The people who you took advantage of, uh, it's kind of on them. Because, again, you're supposed to study for yourself. You're not just supposed to listen to a preacher. And, uh, yeah, I'm going on a tangent. But that's why when people say uh, Christianity is the white man religion, uh, in my mind, I automatically hear, yeah, you're just ignorant. I tell my students, when somebody tell you that, tell them, show me the white man in the Bible. You don't mm -hmm. get there till you get to, like, the Romans and the Greeks mm -hmm. and all of that. Most of the Old Testament is our people, bro. They done called it the Middle East now, but you can't hide a, a blind hair, blue eyed Jesus baby in Egypt if he white, period. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the uh that's the uh yeah, it's not it's not but even even if you even if you don't believe that they weren't black. They they, they they brown. They brown, right? Yeah. yeah. So you they, know, they, no matter uh, how you chalk it up, they brown. Unless you unless... look, there's a reason everybody in Houston is going to be offensive. But you look at our people in Houston; they're a little bit darker. That sun will cook you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm right, sorry, Houston. I love so, you. So so to put so put a pin on that. So because I don't All think right, we, um, we going? I don't think we uh we we talked about the article, but I think what you said was is more. Probably more, but cut preflo dollar. I'm you know what? I'm not really I do believe, and I you know, I'm the Negro pen, right? I do believe he has a uh uh a way of I don't know how many people he helped or or did not help or took advantage of, but I do think what he says can resonate depend with you in a positive way, depending on where you're at in your life. Oh, I'm you know, sure he yeah. blessed some people too. That's why I'm yeah. like I don't know how to, I, I can't, I'm not his judge. Like yeah. you did, at least you came out and corrected yourself. That's growth. And yeah. what we say is, is grace and mercy, man. At the end of the day. Love is, oh, you put that, you stuck that one. This joker snuck a new band on me, y'all. <laughs> that, that's been there, Jesse. Oh my goodness. That's been there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I see it. I see it. I see it. We, yeah. re we rarely use that one though. Yeah, no, nah, it comes yeah. on because Lord knows we be needing grace and mercy. mercy. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, folks. where else you want to go? All right, we got to get to the Jesse of the Week. Pew, 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 pew. We got two Jesse's a week. So my Jesse of the Week is going to be Chris Brown or is Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Breezy. Let me put this article up. So Chris Breezy is mad that y'all are not um, y'all are not supporting his album. <laughs> I'm trying to get the screen share up so I get this article. So that's Chris Breezy is bad that y'all not y'all not sharing this album, and he he wants some he wants some uh he wants y'all to, to keep that same energy because when he uh when he doing something negative he's saying y'all are posting about it and and look July 8th Breezy Ducks album not that it matters it seems like y'all only invest in the negative stories about me Chris gets in trouble the whole world is on it Chris drops an album crickets and. It's just like, yo, bro, you in this. How long Chris Brown been famous for, man? Chris Brown been here a minute. I've seen he been some, around for uh, a minute. Some, some some debate about him being able to battle Usher and people underestimating him, but he do got hits. Yo, I said, I think I was the person that said he going to smash Usher, yo. Y'all was talking, calling me crazy. Yeah, no, nah, not not your boy. Um, I mean, Usher, look, that's a good one. That's it's a good I'm one. I ain't, I ain't gonna think. I ain't gonna think he gonna smash. I, let me rewind. I think I. I think I did say he gonna smash Usher. I don't think he gonna smash Usher, but he's going. Chris Brown got a lot of hits, bro. A lot of he sneaky did. ones too. When you when you really sit and back and think features. about, it. yeah, yeah, you be like, yo, he was on that. He he was on that. And if he bringing out features of who people he featured with, it's a wrap. Yeah, your boy Usher not gonna be able to keep up. Like when he when he when he uh bring out one of them um. Oh, I don't know now. Hold on, that's blasphemy in the church. <laughs> you said what? He Usher got... ain't gonna be able to keep up. Come on, yeah, I now. said if he if he if he bring out features, yo, you yeah, got. Uh, I Brown mean, again, some... come on now, brother. Chris Brown got some big features, but anyway, the what the reason he's a Jesse of the week is like, yo, he knows better. You've been famous for over twenty years. 
you know that people love the neck of this stuff and also this is the first album i believe that people didn't support like you didn't have something negative going on every time you came out i don't think he has he's been around every year he ain't been getting in trouble every year you know what i'm saying like you've been dropping like every year like this is the first album that people didn't rock with maybe maybe i had i tried to listen to it maybe it's the music bro <laughs> I'm 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 gonna give you my opinion, man. I was listening to it at, at work. Um, and it for me, I listened to the whole thing. It was like it wasn't really no, it wasn't really no skips. Like, bro, you still got it. You still got it. See, I didn't listen to it. Um, but I tried to listen to it. But Chris Brown, Chris Brown is is, is one of the artists. I think I said this or wrote this on Facebook a while ago. Chris Brown is one of them artists that I feel like he he makes me feel lazy. Cause I was like, yo, he makes me look at, at every other artist as being lazy. Cause I'm saying this dude be dropping double albums damn near every year. And if you listen to them joints from front to back, it'd be like 50 songs. All them joints be fire. It might take you a month to get through all them songs, but all them joints be fire. And I'm like, yo, he dropping this every year. Jokers, yeah. Jokers don't even drop every year. They don't even drop EPs every year. He dropping double albums and all them joints be fire. And I'm like, yo, he making me feel like I'm lazy. I'm doing something wrong. Cause I don't know how he's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't listen to that Drake album. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's a video out there where people listen <laughs> to like two songs and they just like, yo, nah, man. They get up. And yeah, get I try. I try. So yo, I try. I Lambert, do. I try to listen to it because we supposed to review that. I try to listen to it for the show. And I'm from Jersey. I think I got to the second song. I'm just like, nah, I can't. I'm not listening to no club music right now, but I think it's gonna make a comeback because that's what Beyonce new song is is clubbish too. So I'm probably gonna it's probably on his way back. But what's your what's who who your Jesse of the week? Yeah. Uh my Jesse of the week. I was at uh we had a, a, a cookout and uh my my nephew them was um he was he was he was in a uh I told him you uh Oh, y'all like Lambert, yo. Lambert, when they were Lambert, you gotta connect with me, man. Push your T <laughs> album is tough. I don't know if it's album of the year, but I've been I've been the, I'm a huge Pusha T fan. He's one of the few rappers that I think I am a, a I'ma listen of. to it. Then that's our that's our music. So, hey, so, so, so your listen Christian, listen your Christian is might not be ready for it, bro. But you like you like the ratchet joint too. Oh, look, I'm a niggas. Yeah. You niggas. <laughs> we kind of define ourselves. I know listening to ratchet music is not gonna send me to hell. I checked my input, so we we good on that. Um, my my Jesse of the week is the Highland mm. Park shooter, and so we had a cookout, and my uh my one of my brother in laws is Caucasian, and he was talking to my nephew that just graduated from um Morehouse about problems in society. We like to have deep conversations about everything. And you look at this headline. This is Fox News now. Hold on, let me, let me check you real quick. Yeah, why you mm -hmm. call that joke a Caucasian instead of a what's the other word you was calling him before? A white guy? Nah, you had a name for him because you call us Jesse's. Oh, oh, I'm just trying to uh, keep you consistent. You call us Jesse's. I call us Cliffords. What did what, what did we? What was you, our you was term? calling them something. We I don't forgot about it. Uh, I know I know what you're talking about. It was Becky's for the 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 the, the white women and um, wow. I feel like uh, even Kimberly maybe said Chad's or something like that. But anyway, yeah, but we gotta get we gotta be consistent, bro. Don't be just getting that black folks. We gotta be. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I ain't getting at him on <laughs> yeah, this one because he actually Lambert got come on every week. Yo. <laughs> Eda Mike's. Oh, that brother is learning right there. What you know about some Eda Mike's? That's my boy. That was my roommate at Morgan State, by the way. Eda Mike's. But uh. He's actually a good one on this one because he put me on to something. But look at this headline. Highland Park, 4th of July, suspect's mother had trouble past, including abuse allegations. We've already discussed how when it's one uh, one of theirs, they they, oh, yeah, I see they try to make sure that it's not attributed to the whole group. But if you 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 Arab Arabic or uh you know African American, they'll just put it all on you or whatever. But the dude who shot it up, he was talking to me and um, he brought up this term incels and I had never heard of it. And I hold on, like, hold on. You got rewind. Cause you said the dude that shot it up told you. No, 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 no. My, oh, my brother-in-law. Yo, you knew the, you knew the shooter. 
the 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 chads. The chads. Bl- okay. Look, blank. They gonna blame rap next because you know they made sure to say he was a rapper, but he brought yeah. up these term incels, and I'm like, yeah. I've never heard of that. And what it it stands for is involuntary celibate. And he was talking about how Uh you got these awkward white males. Oh, Lambert be on it. You got these awkward white males who uh, basically, I'm going to summarize it as they ain't got no game. And because Uh they have no game, they can't get women. And then they, they mad. They just mad at life. And they all come together online or whatever. And they just talk bad about women, hate women, and eventually hate life because they're not getting none. Mm. I know that could be frustrating as a married man. I got a term. I, I, I was trying to talk to him about yeah, it. Hold I, up, hold up. Don't get fired, yo. No, nah, I ain't going to get fired. This this is just being real. This is yeah. this is you you're frustrated as a married man? Don't be When fired, I ain't man. got none in a while, I could be grumpy and all of this stuff. And I tell you grumpy wife, now, yo? No, I'm good. I'm good. You good. Why you all up in my business? Don't yo, I, I, I gotta make sure I ask you that because sometimes you be grumpy. I'm like, yo, what's wrong with this joker? Yo, he coming at me crazy. He coming at me hard. Pause. <laughs> pause. Big pause. Like, but anyway, man, uh, I learned about this incel. And so, man, yeah. uh, these people who have this low self-esteem, they are who are targeted by these white supremacist groups because they feel like one, they're white. And life should be good for them. Uh-huh. And the fact that oh, they can't push. get none, they instead of blaming themselves uh-huh. and their socially awkward uh, skills, uh-huh. they blame women. They blame everybody else. They can't get jobs. And, you know, in the conversation, I actually developed some empathy, like because, you know, for the most part, as an African-American male, I think if you white, man, I ain't got no. I ain't got no empathy for you. You can always go get a job. You could run uh-huh. the world if you got the drive and the hustle. But uh-huh. some of these people haven't been taught the necessary skills. And it goes to this Highland Park shooter who, you know, his mom just wasn't there for him. Him uh-huh. and his, there's an article where him and his brother, the coach, uh, was like, man, they was always the last ones to get picked up. Sometimes I'd have to wait for them. All the other parents would come. His parents would come. Like it, it was like. Yeah, they just wasn't loved, and it's like, man, well, this could be like a mental health crisis. We should uh-huh. get all of the awkward white supremacist women with all of the awkward white supremacist males, and maybe uh-huh. they'll stop shooting up the place. Because you know, when you get some, you can say you hate women now because you can't get one, but as soon as a woman show you some attention, oh, you gone. You yeah. gonna hey, you gonna put the AR-15 down and, and pick up some roses or something like maybe we need to look at this and we just overlooking that segment of society, and that's what allowed Trump to play on that. And that's yeah, so I was just about to go with because uh we didn't talk about this before, we saving it for the show, but I, that's why Trump speaks to a lot of them. Joe Rogan speaks to a lot of them. Actually, Joe Rogan be getting at them sometimes, but um, I just want to say like um there's this thing because we just assume white supremacy just like we just assume like um that people can access it the same so that's a great discussion about classism right we never talk about classism in our society it's like the same thing with uh um male they got what they call it patriarchy and all that type of stuff that all Mm -hmm. males have equal access to the power that comes with being a man so all people do all people have equal access to the to what it to power as it relates to being their whiteness so for example like a, a white dude in New York City is going to have different access to power and social mobility than to say a white person that's growing up in poverty and like to say like West Virginia coal, yeah. coal, coal mines. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, um, but the empathy part. So um, I, I just think we, so you know, I'm the Negro pen. I'm, I'm the professor sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't, we like to have simple conversations about complex topics, but class is always there, always present. So it's something we keep in mind, but um, I am eighty percent like you though. Like if you're a white dude, I don't, I don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, but after reading the article and I put it in the chat, I was right. like, man, that must be a miserable existence. And you know, if you try and you get hurt, one thing we know is hurt across the board. Hurt yeah. people, hurt people, yeah. and um, you know. 
that's what we're seeing right now. These people is hurt, and maybe we need to try another way because we really ain't trying nothing. They just allowed to run loose and purchase guns and do whatever they yeah. want. But so, maybe so, we need to love on them, man. So the beautiful Kimberly Williams said empathy for the shooters out here. I don't have empathy for the shooters, so let me be clear. Um, I don't think uh the bishop hustle whole time i'm talking about before they before, become yeah, the shooters you're talking about as a class of people yeah say, before they like i mean they growing up to be shooters yeah, like yeah. That, that's what the article talks about yeah. that's what it lead to they get online in these communities and because they hurt they talk about being hurt and wanting to hurt people and mm. it just it just all what starts well. so you know what i think that i think we can go out on this because we didn't obviously we didn't plan this, but I one of the thing against segments I got maybe they can't be saved, right? But I was talking about so we talk about incels. I was talking about gang members that just happen to rap that's snitching on themselves. So I'm going down this rabbit hole with, with Corey and, and the, the, the group chat I have from what's the name from the R Institute of Philadelphia. So one of the one of the group members is he trying to get me to be more passionate about drill music and what's happening there. And I'm like, yo, bruh. It's gonna sound crazy and harsh and Negro peeing of me, but sometimes, well, I ain't say sometimes everybody can't be saved, bro. And the reason I bring it up, um, the drill music is like, yo, so I don't know if you're familiar with what's going on in the drill scene, right? So what they're doing is killing people and rapping about it, making songs and videos about it, right? So mm -hmm. one of them, one a couple of them songs go though. I ain't gonna even lie, but um, like yo, just think if you if you if you if you are the person that killed somebody, right? One, you killed the person, so you're already like putting yourself out there. Then you go and make a song about it, right? So you're like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna make some bars about this. You make a song about it. You release the song and then do the video. Maybe, just maybe, you get whatever comes to you for that. You <laughs> read what you sow. Huh? You read what you, like, yeah, you can't rap. You can't kill somebody, rap about it release it then do a video about it and then be like yo like we gotta come save you now nah maybe you can't yeah. be saved bro yeah and maybe that's the incels too i didn't think about it but wrap it up just like yo maybe like some it's a certain pop group of the population that maybe they can't be saved bro maybe this is what living in an advanced society comes to like we got to deal with that pipe population however we got to deal with them obviously people are dying that's 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 unfortunate but maybe there's no solution bro <laughs> What if it, like if a, if a dude can't get no a woman, how do we even solve that problem, yo? Yeah, you it's a woman out there that feel like she can't get no dude. Y'all y'all get together. And to, to be clear for clarity, um, I'm not saying that the the Highland Park shooter like deserves any empathy or shouldn't go to jail or or nothing like that. I'm saying before they get there, yeah, man we as a society and not us not it ain't our uh, uh for the african-american community this ain't for us to solve this ain't our issue because it's rooted in white supremacy as well they feel like they should be able to win in life because mm -hmm. they are white and the article talks about that too and that's why the white supremacists can come in and recruit them because it's like yeah hey, you ain't dope. winning the beautiful right. kimberly g williams brought up a, a great point they don't want each other <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna leave it there. We got we got two minutes. Yeah, um, we went through everything. We got through everything, bro. Congratulations. We got uh, we had a lot on this. I ain't think we was gonna get through all the topics. We got through everything. Yeah, so we who, did. So who we uh take us out in prayer? This this take your us out. so um before we take us out in prayer, please support. You see the cash apps. We uh we trying to step it up. We ain't trying, we stepped it up. We got the we got the website up. Please visit the website. Please follow us on all social media. The website is pimpynigas.com. You can visit my web personal website, thebathea.com. You can, you can visit Charlie Bingham's website, which is charliebinghamjr.com. Um, that's where you can find his books. And Lambert <laughs> puts a free R. Kelly. You're a week late, bro. You should have been here last week. <laughs> Your good, your good roommate was going hard for R. Kelly last week. I was like, "Yo, please don't get fired, please don't get fired." But I let me hope take it's gonna out. be a quick prayer, Jesse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me take a sound of a quick prayer. Thank you, everybody. Bow your head, including Lambert, who wants to free R. Kelly. Um, um, Lord, please, uh, um, thank you for letting us allow to uh, allow us to, this time to do the show. Thanks for everybody that tuned in live that and that will tune into the re to watch it again. 
um thanks for you know the blessings and, and the overabundance of, of money that you know allows charlie to buy his gucci glasses in jesus name amen Amen. 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 We're gonna end it right there. Yeah. The Gucci glasses, you hilarious, bro. <laughs>